Inside a double iron gate lies a great artifact from an event that changed the world. It's none other than Gutenberg's 42-line Bible. The Gutenberg's movable type printing, which this Bible was printed with, has been hailed as the most important historical event in the last millennium. But the country to invent metal type is Korea, not Germany. There is Jigji, the oldest surviving book published with metal printing method. There's even a record of printing prescribed ritual text, something to boast about. During the reign of Sejong, the great of Joseon, Gapinja opened the door to a golden age of civilization for Korea by achieving the best printing technology in the world. This took place 20 years before Gutenberg printed the 42-line Bible. Is Gutenberg an inventor? Maybe Gutenberg was influenced in any way by Korea's metal printing technology. Wittenberg is a city located about 200 kilometers south of Berlin, Germany. The city is officially called Lutherstadt Wittenberg. Although a small city with a population of about 49,000, Wittenberg holds a strong place in world history. This is where Luther's Protestant Reformation was first inspired in 1517. This is why the citizens placed a statue of Luther in the middle of the city. The Luther Hall is located right in front of the statue. One exhibit that looks irrelevant to the Protestant Reformation catches the visitor's attention. It's Gutenberg's printing press. Why is Gutenberg's printing press exhibited in this place? Man kann die Bedeutung des Buchdrucks für die Reformation gar nicht überschätzen. Der bekannte Kirchenhistoriker Bernd Möller hat es mal in den kurzen Slogan gefasst, ohne Buchdruck keine Reformation. Und er hatte damit vollkommen recht. In the Middle Ages, people ruled other people in the name of God. This is why the European Middle Ages is also called the Dark Ages. There were seven crusades in the name of religion. Countless innocent soldiers died during the war. The Roman Catholic Church sold indulgences in order to deliver the cost of war. A religion that offered forgiveness of sins for money can no longer be called a religion. This is when Martin Luther rose against the authority and the corruption of the Roman Catholic Church. Martin Luther stood on the forefront of the Reformation and started off by translating the Bible. In the Middle Ages, only a very few number of priests owned a Bible. Moreover, it was written in Latin, a language not used in everyday life, making it inaccessible for the common people. 
Martin Luther translated the Latin Bible into his mother tongue German and published the first German Bible in 1522. 430 copies of this Bible were produced, allowing many Germans to read the Bible with their own eyes. The 95 Theses, or the Disputation of Martin Luther on the Power of Efficacy of Indulgences, was spread across Germany in just two weeks thanks to Gutenberg's printing press. Es den Buchdruck Gutenbergs nicht gegeben hätte, dann wäre Martin Luthers Theologie, dann wären seine theologischen Gedanken sicher nur eine äh, unter vielen, vielen äh, mittelalterlichen Ketzereien geblieben. So haben seine Gedanken von Anfang an und ganz schnell Resonanz in der breitesten Öffentlichkeit Deutschlands gefunden. Viele, viele Menschen konnten sich mit seinen Gedanken auseinandersetzen, konnten sich mit ihnen identifizieren. Numerous books with the ideas of reformers, including Luther, were published in large volumes in a short period of time, thanks to the printing press. The Reformation sparked the end of the Middle Ages. The printing press was the driving force behind the Reformation. That's why history calls Gutenberg's printing press the father of the Reformation. Located on the River Rhine, Mainz is Gutenberg's hometown. The citizens of Mainz collected money and built the Gutenberg Museum in 1900, 500 years after Gutenberg's death. Every day the Gutenberg Museum demonstrates Gutenberg's printing press for its visitors. Many people are filled with curiosity because the typesetting has already been a relic in the computer age. But in actuality, they are experiencing history while amusing themselves with curiosity. Wir denken eben an die Reformation des 16. Jahrhunderts, an eine große theologische Veränderung. Wir denken aber auch weitergehend zum Beispiel die Ideen der Aufklärung, die also von der Bildung für jedermann und jeder Frau gesprochen hat. Und wir gehen davon aus, dass auch die heutige Demokratie, die darauf beruht, dass jeder zu jeder Zeit alle Wissen, alles Informationen bekommen kann, ein, zu einem Großteil auf diese technischen Erfindungen Gutenbergs zurückgeht. Man kann sagen, dass sich die Kultur und Gesellschaft der letzten 600 Jahre mit Gutenberg ganz anders dargestellt hat, als es ohne die Erfindungen Gutenbergs gewesen wäre. Before Gutenberg's printing press came to be, only hand copying existed in Europe. Scribes had to hand copy word by word in order to transcribe a book. All the Bibles at the time were made by monistic scribes. Monistic scribes took approximately three years to copy one Bible. They carried on this difficult task by faith and treasured the Bibles they made. They sometimes decorated the cover with beautiful pieces and jewels. Some books were covered in leather. Because as the books were hard to come by, some books were preserved in chains. Gutenberg's movable type printing put an end to this era. Gutenberg's movable type printing swiftly spread across Europe.
Bereits fünf Jahre, nachdem in Mainz gedruckt wurde, haben wir Druckorte quer durch Deutschland, aber auch in Italien, in Frankreich, in Spanien, in den Gebieten der heutigen Tschechoslowakei, der Tschechei, in Österreich. Das heißt, innerhalb von 50 Jahren nur haben in über 250 Orten Europas in über 3000 Druckoffizinen Drucker gesetzt und gedruckt. Das heißt, es ist eine rasante Ausbreitung gewesen. This is the Plantin Moritas Museum in Antwerp, Belgium. Founded in 1555, this museum was the first printing company in Europe. This printing company was in business until the 19th century and was preserved as a museum. Moritas Printing Press was established approximately 100 years after Gutenberg came up with movable type printing. At the time, it had 24 printing presses and dozens of workers worked nights to print books. Gutenberg's movable type printing swiftly spread across Europe, giving way to numerous books printed in all subjects. This opened the age of mass distribution of knowledge and information. It served as the driving force behind the Industrial Revolution and the Bourgeois Revolution changing the world. Who is Gutenberg, the man who made Europe escape the Dark Ages and made modern civilization possible? How did he find interest in movable type printing and where did his technology come from? Karlsruhe is about 130 kilometers southwest of Mainz. Karlsruhe city archive contains an important book that tells us about Gutenberg's family background. This book has a list of the names of all the aristocrats who lived in Mainz at the time of Gutenberg and the respective coat of arms. The Gutenberg family coat of arms is here as well. Gutenberg was from a noble family. Johannes Gutenberg gehört Familie an, die in Mainz führend war. Es war sozusagen eine stadtadlige Familie und deswegen konnte diese Familie auch Lehen haben vom Pfalzgraf in Heidelberg. Dieses bezieht sich auf ein Lehen in Oppenheim, das ist eine kleine Stadt, rein aufwärts von Mainz. Nicht, das kann man, man kann es nicht genau erklären, ne, warum man so eine Art Bettler-Situation ins Wappen nimmt. Äh, vielleicht hat auch ein Gänzfleisch äh, mal Bettler betreut, also hat etwas Soziales getan. Und hat, man hat den Bettler äh, in positivem Sinne in sein Wappen genommen. Das kann auch sein, aber erklärbar ist es nicht genau. What was Mainz like at the time Gutenberg lived there? Diese Stadtansicht auf einem Kalender auf das Jahr 1565 gibt einigermaßen realistisch den Zustand der Stadt wieder, wie, wie ihn Gutenberg äh, zu seiner Zeit äh, erlebt hat. Äh, Gab es natürlich zur Zeit Gutenbergs den, die Stadt dominierenden Dom, das Mainzer Rathaus und all die anderen Kirchen und Klöster. <lacht> Mainz äh, macht hier den Eindruck einer sehr großen Stadt, einer sehr prächtigen Stadt, äh, einer sehr glanzvollen Stadt. Although currently a small city of approximately 23,000 people in midwestern part of Germany, Mainz has a history of 2,000 years. During Gutenberg's time, the Archbishop of Germany lived in Mainz. It was the center of politics and economy as well as religion. In 1400, Gutenberg was born in this house, in the heart of Mainz. The Gutenberg family was an aristocratic family that has been living in Mainz for 200 years. The Gutenberg family lived in this house since Johannes Gutenberg's grandfather's time. His name is Gutenberg because that was the name of this house. At the time, people's last names were the names of the houses they lived in. 
Behind Gutenberg's home is a church partially destroyed due to a war. The city of Mainz presumed this to be the church Gutenberg was baptized as a child and preserved it. Eltville is a small town on the Rhine about 15 kilometers away from Mainz. In 1411, when Gutenberg was about 11 years old, his family moved to Eltville. This church under construction is said to look exactly as it did when Gutenberg spent his youth here. On a wall in this church is the Gutenberg family coat of arms. It seems like the church did this to honor the Gutenberg family for giving financial help to the town or the church. konnten ihre konnten ihr Geld anlegen, indem sie Landgüter im Umland erwarben. Auch die Familie Gutenbergs war hier im Rheingau begütert und in Eltville besaßen sie ein Anwesen, in dem Gutenberg als Kind einige Jahre gelebt hat und wo er sich hin zurückziehen konnte, als er dann Among the cities near the Rhine, Eltville is famous for its rural beauty. As a boy, Gutenberg was probably brought up in luxury as a curious child from a renowned aristocrat family. Even the building that was used as a school during Gutenberg's time is still present. At the time, aristocratic children were all educated. Gutenberg probably studied in this building as well. To Gutenberg's time, haben die Kinder dort gut Latein gelernt, weil sie benötigt wurden als Sänger für den Gregorianischen Choral in der Kirche. Wir wissen, welche lateinischen Schriftsteller sie gelesen haben. Das war eine gute Voraussetzung für einen Mann, der später einmal die Bibel drucken wollte in lateinischer Sprache. But we do not have any record of Gutenberg attending this school. This is the first recorded document of Gutenberg. This document briefly states that on 1420, when Gutenberg was 20 years old, his father passed away and there was a serious dispute over the inheritance among the siblings. We do not know whether Gutenberg stayed longer in Eltville or went back to Mainz after his father died because there are no records. This is the second document with Gutenberg's name on it. The Archbishop of Mainz sent out a letter to all the aristocrats living away from Mainz to come back. Gutenberg's name appears in this paper. This letter is from 1430 when Gutenberg was 30. That means Gutenberg lived away from Mainz at the time. Why did Gutenberg leave Mainz and what did he do? Mainz war im 15. Jahrhundert eine Stadt mit schweren Problemen. Sie war in wirtschaftlich in großen Nöten. Frankfurt äh, begann äh, hier ihre Stellung zu beflügeln mit der Messe. Äh, Mainz hatte nicht mehr die wirtschaftliche Bedeutung, die es einmal im 13. Jahrhundert, im Hochmittelalter hatte. Äh, politisch äh, war die Stadt ins Abseits geraten. Sie spielte nicht mehr so eine große politische Rolle der Dem Stadtrat war es insbesondere nicht gelungen, sich vollkommen von der Herrschaft des Stadtbischofs zu emanzipieren und mit der Folge, dass viele Bürger aus Mainz in dieser Zeit auswanderten und die Stadt auch sehr, sehr hohe Schulden hatte. Mainz war zur Zeit Gutenbergs Bankrott. In the 15th century, when Gutenberg lived, Mainz was operated as a corporate town. The town was mainly operated by the aristocrats and the guild, an association of craftspeople. The guild demanded the town laws to be changed and did not approve of the special privileges enjoyed by the aristocrats. 
The guild also demanded that the aristocrats pay more taxes. Many unsatisfied aristocrats left Mainz. Gutenberg probably left Mainz for this reason as well. Where did Gutenberg go? And what did he do after leaving Mainz? The River Rhine is on the border of Germany and France. If you cross the Rhine from Mainz, you'll find yourself in Strasbourg, France. Strasbourg was part of Germany before World War II, but became French soil after Germany lost the war. Since long ago, Strasbourg was conveniently located with many people and developed in trade. In the busy Strasbourg street stands a statue of Gutenberg. Why is a statue of Gutenberg a German man from Mainz in Strasbourg, France? Parce qu'il est venu ici, il avait, euh, il a imprimé, il avait une imprimerie à Strasbourg pendant un, pendant un moment et, euh, et puis voilà. C'était une célébrité de, de Strasbourg. Et, euh. In the Strasbourg archive, there is a document that explains when Gutenberg came to Strasbourg and what he did there. The secretary of the de Mayence, who was called Nicolas, Nicolaus de Verstadt, when he was de passage à Strasbourg, Il l'a fait euh, arrêter. C'est la première mention de son séjour à Strasbourg, mais on admet qu'il était déjà à Strasbourg peu de temps avant. Nicholas was the financial manager of Mainz. Gutenberg loaned money to Mainz during its financial crisis, but didn't get his money back. In order to get his money back, he held the financial manager hostage during his stay in Strasbourg. There is another record of Gutenberg in the Strasbourg archive. There was a list of potential draftees according to their occupation. Gutenberg is on this list. Gutenberg was classified as a metal worker on this list. He was a metal worker in Strasbourg. Gutenberg, quand il, était à, quand il était à Strasbourg, et on sait qu'il était orfèvre de profession, et un orfèvre sait faire euh, toutes sortes de choses. Il fait des colliers, il fait des pierres, enfin, il ne fait pas des pierres précieuses, mais il sait polir des pierres précieuses, il sait faire des calices, il sait faire des, euh, des gobelets, euh, etc. Tout, tout ce qui a trait à, à la vie quotidienne. Soit euh, civile, soit religieuse. Maintenant, pourquoi est-ce qu'il est venu à Strasbourg Strasbourg était à l'époque une très grande, premièrement une grande ville, une, une ville célèbre, et puis où il pensait pouvoir trouver euh, également du travail, puisqu'il était orfèvre de métier, qui pouvait, pouvait, euh, pouvait facilement trouver du travail à, à Strasbourg. We do not know why a Mainz aristocrat like Gutenberg decided to work as a metal worker in Strasbourg, because there are no records to tell us why. After his father's death, Gutenberg went through discord with his siblings. He left his hometown Mainz, which was going downhill, and seeked a new life in Strasbourg, a city that was emerging as an economic center. In the outskirts of Strasbourg is a sign with Gutenberg's name on it. This is where Gutenberg worked while he was working as a metal worker in Strasbourg. Although made of cement, the residents made a sculpture and turned this place into a park to commemorate Gutenberg's workshop. 
After leaving his hometown, Gutenberg tried to make a comeback after challenging himself to a new task. At the time, foundries were only allowed to be built on the riverside in order to protect the city from the possibility of fire. This is why Gutenberg built his workshop on the riverside. He made this sacred site souvenir in this foundry. This souvenir made of melted lead was also called a polished metal mirror because there was a reflecting mirror on it. Achen is located in the Midwest part of Germany. The Achen Cathedral is located approximately 500 kilometers away from Strasbourg. It's one of the four major sacred sites in Europe. There are four relics in here. The dress Virgin Mary wore, Jesus' diapers, the cloth Jesus wore around his waist, and the cloth that had covered John the Baptist's head after he was beheaded. Pilgrims came from all over Europe as well as Germany to visit the Achen Cathedral. The pilgrims from the southern part of France, Switzerland, and Italy had to go through Strasbourg. This is why Gutenberg tried to make money by selling polished metal mirrors in Strasbourg for the people who were on their way to Aachen. Once every seven years, the Aachen Cathedral displayed the Virgin Mary's dress to the public, and 700,000 to 1 million people came to see this sacred site. dass es plötzlich ein, ein solches Element gab mit einem kleinen Spiegel in der Mitte. Und die Menschen konnten jetzt unten auf dem Platz stehen und das Heiligtum an, anleuchten auf dem, auf dem Strahl, der von dem Kleid Gottes, von dem Kleid Mariens kam, auf den, auf das, auf den Menschen selber. Sie haben, es, sie haben es angemacht, es gibt sogar Ösen, es wurde, also hier auf den, es, wurde aufge, es wurde aufgenäht. Und insofern hatte man etwas ganz Kostbares, weil es im Grunde vom Kleid der Gottesmutter in irgendeiner Form fast gesegnet war. In 1439, a year before the pilgrimage, it was cancelled because of the Black Plague that swept Europe. And Gutenberg couldn't make any money. Gutenberg collaborated with a few people to run the polished metal mirror business. When the business turned out badly, the collaborators had a dispute that went to court. The lawsuit document still remains. We can find an interesting new fact from this. Gutenberg and his collaborators launched a new business when their polished metal mirror business didn't turn out well. What was this new business? Uh, is it the press and others that then others gelassen have? Is it what you press? P R E S S E. Press. This means to press on something. In the present day, it's used to refer to printing machines or journalism. But before Gutenberg's time, there was no concept of printing in Europe. Does the word press mean to print? C'est possible. Ça permet au moins de penser qu'il peut s'agir d'essai. In this document is another clue that suggests that Gutenberg's presse had something to do with printing. It's difficult to say how we can interpret what Andres Dritzen says, as if he had possessed of his living une collection de livres grands et petits qu'il y avait euh, une collection de livres mais on ne sait pas ce qu'on peut sous-entendre sous le mot livre est-ce que c'était des manuscrits 
Ou est-ce que c'était des imprimés Personne ne le sait. We are not sure whether the presse was a printing machine. But there is another document that tells us that the presse was a machine made discreetly by Gutenberg's guidance. C'est donc le, le texte euh, qui concerne la fabrication de la presse par Conrad de Saspar. Et le témoin dit, tu as fait la presse, tu sais donc le mieux de quoi il s'agit et prend les pièces, sort les pièces de la presse et met les en pièces, en morceaux. Euh, ainsi, personne ne peut savoir de quoi il s'agit. Je pense que oui, le, en 1439, euh, euh, on travaillait certainement déjà au moins à des questions autour de la fonderie, de la taille des caractères typographiques mm -hmm. et de tout ce que, toute cette euh, industrie, toute cette fabrication mm -hmm. de la, des caractères et de la machine à fondre. Mm -hmm. euh, probablement, on n'a peut-être pas encore travaillé vraiment sur la question de la presse typographique, mais l'essentiel de l'invention, c'est les caractères typographiques, la normalisation des caractères et la machine à fondre. The scholars generally agree that Gutenberg probably made his first attempt at type printing in this foundry. But there are no records that tell us why he suddenly decided to go into printing when he made polished metal mirrors to make money, more or less anything that'll induce a gas. Gutenberg lived in Strasbourg at least until March of 1444. This record that shows he paid wine taxes to Strasbourg is the last record in Strasbourg about Gutenberg. Es gibt da ähm, viele unterschiedliche ähm, einzelne Bestandteile, die man erst erproben musste und er hat es nicht unbedingt jetzt zu, ähm, gleich mit einem Buch versucht, sondern mit verschiedenen Dingen und am Schluss fügte sich das dann zu einer ähm, guten neuen Technologie zusammen. Das war ungefähr ähm, ja, Mitte der 30er Jahre in Straßburg. Ob er schon während seines Straßburger Aufenthaltes es geschafft hat, dann wirklich ähm, die ganze Technik des Buchdruckes zusammenzufügen, das wissen wir nicht. Jedenfalls muss er um 1448, als er wieder in Mainz war, doch so weit gewesen sein, dass er die ersten... When did Gutenberg come back to Mainz to print? The main city archive has a document that proves that Gutenberg was back in Mainz by 1448. In this document, Gutenberg borrowed 150 guilders from a man named Gelthus, which was a lot of money at the time. Here in the Urkunde wird Gutenberg auch mit seinem ganzen Namen genannt. Er taucht hier auf, Gutenberg. Here in dieser Zeile. Gutenberg bekennt hier anderthalb hundert Gulden. Den Kredit hat er nicht direkt bei Geldhus aufgenommen. Geldhus hat einen Kredit aufgenommen, um das Geld an Gutenberg weiterzugeben. Das ist sehr interessant, denn Geldhus hat sich dafür hoch, ähm, hohe Sicherheiten geben müssen, während er das Geld an Gutenberg weitergegeben hat, ohne große Sicherheiten zu verlangen. Ähm, deshalb nimmt man an, dass Geldhus der Meinung war, dass Gutenberg ein Unternehmen vorhatte, das so viel Gewinn abwerfen konnte, dass es risikolos war, ihm eine so große Geldsumme zu leihen. We do not know when Gutenberg returned to Mainz from Strasbourg, but in 1448 he borrowed money to open a print shop. It seems like he immediately went into printing after setting up a print shop. This is how the 42-line Bible came to be in 1455. Gutenberg first printed 180 copies of this edition. How long did it take him? Es gibt da Berechnungen, wie lange alles gedauert hat, und danach kann man davon ausgehen, dass allein für das Drucken nur anderthalb Jahre gebraucht worden sind. Aber es kamen viele Vorarbeiten hinzu, es musste ja Schrift geschaffen werden, es musste allerlei anderes vorbereitet werden. 
und alles in allem, also kommt man auf einen Zeitraum von wahrscheinlich zwei bis drei Jahren. The name 42 line Bible refers to the number of lines of print on each page. This edition is beautifully executed. After the Bibles are printed with movable types, artists illuminated artwork by hand on every page. Was the 42 line Bible the first book Gutenberg printed? Das ist nicht das erste Druckwerk, ähm, aber äh, also wir haben von den Drucken, die früher waren, äh, im Großen und Ganzen keine genauen Daten und viele sind gar nicht mehr vollständig vorhanden, sondern nur noch kleine Fragmente, also wie diese Donut-Fragmente zum Beispiel. Aber ähm, also er musste schon Praxis gehabt haben, schon Erfahrung gesammelt haben, damit eine Bibel in diesem Umfang, also so ein großes Werk, das auch so schön gemacht ist, damit das möglich war. Before printing the 42-line Bible, Gutenberg probably gained enough practice by printing single-sheet prints like the Donatas Grammar Book. Practicing from printing single sheets probably helped him greatly in printing the Bible, his goal. How long did it take Gutenberg to complete this project after his first attempt at type printing? Wir können es nicht ganz genau sagen, aber wenn man davon ausgeht, dass das Drucken wahrscheinlich um 1440 begonnen wurde, denn dafür spricht eine Tradition, dann ist es eigentlich sehr schnell gegangen. Diese sehr komplizierte Tätigkeit hat er in den Jahren, in denen die Gutenberg-Bibel gedruckt wurde, also 1452 bis 1455, schon perfekt beherrscht. Und insofern kann man sagen, dass es vielleicht ein Jahrzehnt oder anderthalb Jahrzehnte gedauert hat, bis die Druckkunst wirklich vollendet worden ist. Taking in Gutenberg's Presse at Strasbourg as his first attempt at printing and the two to three years for the 42-line Bible and the practice time with the single-sheet prints. It probably took Gutenberg around 10 years to master his printing techniques. Maybe Gutenberg's experience as a metalsmith helped him perfect movable type printing. But what's more important is the idea of printing. There are no records whatsoever of Gutenberg in the business of books before he attempted printing. Moreover, he switched to movable type printing abruptly while making polished metal mirrors. In Europe, there were no foundations laid out for printing before Gutenberg's time. In a time like this, he came up with the printing press and displayed a state-of-the-art printing technology. J'imagine assez volontiers que on peut compter 1430, 1435 jusqu'à 1450 ou 55 comme vous le, comme vous le souhaitez. Mm -hmm. Ça, c'est une, une idée qui était dans l'air, qui s'est développée progressivement et malgré tout cette invention s'est fait très vite même si on compte une vingtaine d'années. The first movable type system in history was in China. In Hangzhou of China, a man named Bi Sheng made the world's first attempt at movable type printing. That was in 1041. Letters were engraved on clay and banked to make movable types. He made clay movable types. The clay movable type was fragile and it was difficult to fix the letters onto the plate. Bisheng laid pine resin on the bottom, but the types with pine resin were hard to reuse. Thus, Bisheng's movable type system ended in failure. In the beginning of the 13th century, China made movable types out of wood. The wood block movable types were sturdier and easier to print than clay types, and were only used briefly in some areas.
Metal type printing in China first came to be in the 1490s. It was printed in Huitong Guan. The Zhu Chen Zhou Yi is the first book printed in metal type in China. Metal printing in China was 40 years behind Gutenberg. Out of all the metal type print materials in the world, the oldest is Jikji, printed by Hong Dok Sa of Chengju. Jikji was printed in metal 78 years before Gutenberg's 42 line Bible. But Jikji is not the first metal type printed book in Korea. It is likely that Korea began printing with metal types in the early 1200s. In Yi Kyo Bo's collected works of Minister Yi of Goryeo, there is a record that says 28 copies of 50 volume prescribed ritual text were printed in metal type around 1234. This record alone proves that Korea began metal printing 200 years before Gutenberg did. The Korean metal movable type system flourished during Joseon times. During the reign of Taejong, the third king of Joseon, a national print shop called Jujaso was built, printing many books. During King Sejong the Great's time, typesetting technology reached its peak. The prior method of typesetting with bee wax was thrown out, making way for completely prefabricated printing using only metal types. The typesetting technique Gutenberg used was developed during King Sejong's time. During King Sejong the Great's time, not only printing techniques developed in Joseon, but astronomy as well. All sorts of celestial globes were made in precision. Sejong的 in Korea, ink was put on the metal typesetter before paper was placed on top of it to print. Gutenberg pressed with his printing press. This is where Gutenberg's printing technique stands out. But Gutenberg is not the first person to come up with the printing press. Gutenberg took the idea of the grape compressor, which had been around in Europe for a long time, to his printing press. If the presse from the Strasbourg document is this compressor, then Gutenberg might have taken about 10 years to come up with the printing press then that means the idea for his movable type came from somewhere else. Korean Gutenberg 
보여주게 된 것입니다. 그런데 구텐베르크는 어, 약 10년 안팎에 혼자 힘으로 이 같은 기술을 탄생시킨 것입니다. 더욱이 구텐베르크 이전에 유럽에는 그 활자 인쇄술에 대한 어, 노하우가 없는 상태였습니다. 그래서 우리는 구텐베르크가 우리 한국의 금속 활자 인쇄술로부터 어떤 차원에서든 간에 어, 영향을 받은 것이 아닐까 하는 그 강한 의문을 제기하게 됩니다. Das ist eine sehr alte Technik, die es schon lange in Europa gibt, aber auch im Fernen Osten schon viel länger gab. Wahrscheinlich kommt es auch daher, das weiß man ja nicht so genau. Die Frage ist, wie kommt die Idee von Korea bis nach Europa? Das ist ein sehr weiter Weg im Mittelalter. Of all the inventions out of Metalloid, movable type is regarded as the best. Korea opened the age of movable type 200 years before Gutenberg. In the case of Korea, the first country to come up with the metalloid type system, technology advanced in several stages. Compared to Korea, Gutenberg came up with the best printing technique in such a short period of time. Even before Christ, the Silk Road, the Steppe Road, and the Sea Road opened. Connecting the East and the West, sharing civilization. Was Korea really too far to have influenced Gutenberg's metal movable type printing? The name Silk Road came to be because silk was passed from China to the West. If the Korean movable type technique was passed on, there would definitely be a type road.